going to get started and people can just join us as they join us. I'll watch both for the questions and to let people in. So, okay. All thank right. So, yeah, thank you, boys and girls. I was, I'm so pleased to introduce you to Pamela Cameron, who wrote a really amazing book, and she's going to read it to you and tell you all about it. Right now, we're not doing the crafts. I'll let you know when you can, okay? All right. Take it away. Hey, thanks, Miss Catherine. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to see you in the library. I bet you were excited to come and do a project and hear a story. I'm pretty excited, too. Right now, I'm in Appleton, not too far from where you live. But I also um, live in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Let's start right off with sport so you can get an idea what kind of dog sport was. Now, I'm going to, Miss Catherine, what I see is a small window, but I can work that off that. We, we can see, we, we have you on a bigger screen, and right, right now you're yeah. Good. Everything good. Okay, now I'm getting used. I'm real good here. Now, if you look very carefully, you'll see a life preserver ring. Now, if I was right with you today, I would, would I'd be like asking someone in the audience, but I know you're all thinkers right now, and you see a round white life preserver, and inside that is a dog, and that is Sport. Sport was a real dog. Is he, does he look like a small dog or a big dog? A big dog, yes, I can hear you. He was a big dog. He was a Newfoundland retriever. You might know retrievers, you might not know about Newfoundlands, but by the end of today, I hope you'll learn a little bit about a Newfoundland dog, a Newfie. Now, two men are holding that life preserver ring. And if we had a lot of time to talk, I'd, I'd give you more information. But those are the crewmen of the ship that Sport lived on. And if you look in the background, you'll see a ship. And that's the ship that Sport lived on, the Hyacinth. So let's start the story. And now that you know it's a true story, and it really happened. I'll read parts of the story. And then if you have ideas or questions, you can either add them in the chat or at the end, I'd love for you to ask some questions about sport and some of the things I talk about. I'm also going to talk about how dogs are working dogs and helping dogs, and also how you can communicate with dogs or watch how they are trying to communicate with you, okay? Here's the cover, Sport Ship Dog of the Great Lakes. Can I interject just really quickly? Yes. While we're, we're doing this, boys and girls, you can, the one that looks like this, this crack, you can start to work on coloring it because we'll cut it out later for, to make it as a stand up. Um, but yeah, right. so you can do that while you're listening. That's a perfect thing. Right. To yep. Here's it. mine. Here's mine right here. Yep. How cool is that? That's cool. Very oh, relaxing. Well, Nothing better than coloring and listening to a story. Okay. Mm. <laughs> you can do everything. With a storm, so you can look up occasionally. I'll put um, the illustrations here. So you can the illustrators. And there's the illustrations by Renee Grafe. And as I turn the pages, you'll realize she is an excellent illustrator. She used the photographs of the real sport to draw the sport in the story. With a storm rolling in over Lake Michigan, the docks seemed even busier than usual. Big ships made their way into port and dropped anchor in the Milwaukee River. Sirens and bells sounded warnings. Hurried dock workers shouted to each other, no one noticed the skinny puppy wandering the docks. No one heard him when he barked nervously into the wind. And no one saw where he ended up as the storm started. In those days, there were a lot of strays around. Until the hyacinth arrived. Off the starboard, dog in the water, dog in the water. 
Captain, we're taking the dinghy down. Albert and Clifford didn't wait for their captain's okay. Quickly, the two crewmen lowered the boat into the water. Albert and Clifford steered the dinghy, trying to reach the puppy. Come here, pup. Come on, we'll help you, they called out over the storm. Come on, we'll get you. Just as they reached the dog, Albert reached out. He wrapped his hands around the puppy and pulled him to safety. Wasn't that nice of Albert and Clifford? Now, what will happen? Back on the Hyacinth, now remind, reminder, the Hyacinth is a big ship. Some of the crew gathered round. Clifford toweled the puppy dry. I can't believe it. The fur next to his body is dry. And he's not even shaking. Look at his paws. Albert said. They're webbed like a duck. The captain ran his hands over the dog's head and down to his haunches. He looks like he's part Newfoundland, a Newfie. The captain knew that Newfies are great water dogs. Their double coat keeps them warm and their webbed paws help them swim. An idea formed in the captain's head. We could use a good ship dog. This dog could be the one. Everyone liked the idea. They decided to name their new friend Sport. And that's how a homeless puppy found a home on a ship. So Sport was rescued from the Milwaukee River. Now, here's the drawing that Renee Grafe did, and she shows the ship. So I hope, hopefully you can check, you'll check out the book from, from your library, the Aram Public Library. And I, again, I'll, I didn't do it at the beginning, but thank you, Aram Public Library, for having Sport come. So here's the ship. And Sport's roaming all around this big ship. It's his new home. He must feel pretty good. He's not a homeless puppy anymore. Now, what was happening? The crew was loading supplies. They loaded coal, kerosene, lumber, tools, paint, furniture, firewood, and even small boats onto the Hyacinth. So why are they loading everything? Well, what they were doing was loading all those supplies to take to the lighthouses on Lake Michigan. Now, I know you're so busy, you're busy right now and focused, but inside your head, you can think you've either perhaps seen a lighthouse, perhaps you've climbed to the top of a lighthouse. And that's because there are lighthouses in Wisconsin and Michigan. Actually, there are lighthouses all over the world. And I'm mm -hmm. guessing you know that lighthouses are the way to, for ships out in the water to know exactly where they are and that because there's a signal at the top. So sports ship was bringing supplies to those lighthouses, all those supplies because people were living at the lighthouses. Someone had to turn the lights on. So they were going all over and sport is on that ship. Now you can help a little bit here. The crew's getting ready for another trip. And the captain called out, all cargo lashed and tight. And let's pretend you're the crew and you can say, aye, aye, Captain. I'll repeat, yes. all cargo lashed and tight. Aye, aye, aye Captain. <laughs> can you color and color and be the crew? Couple more. We're really good multitaskers. I know. <laughs> Anchors pulled. Aye, aye, Captain. Heepo, heepo, we're off. They shut the engine shutter as it powered up. The hyacinth steamed to the Cana Island Lighthouse. That is up in Door County, so maybe you could go there sometime and visit. 
Now, this is a drawing illustration of what that lighthouse looked like. There's the house the family lived on and the supplies are coming. Children lived in the house right by the lighthouse. And are they excited that sport came? Yes, because not only perhaps did the hyacinth bring sugar and things for their family to eat, but the ship also brought library books. <gasps> they did not have a library like you have. So <laughs> consider yourself lucky. They were extremely excited when the boat brought library books, probably maybe some candy or something special for the family. And so that's why there's Sport happy to see them and they're happy to see him. Now, I'll show you a photograph. I know there are those of you that are uh, watching virtually. Here's a photograph. And if you look very carefully at the bottom, you'll see some baseball bats. And yeah. by those baseball bats, do you see a dog? Yeah. That is sport. And the men around sport are the crew of the ship. So not only did they bring supplies to the lighthouse, when they wanted some fun, they played baseball and sport was part of their team. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. So when I found this photograph and during research, and some of you are probably doing research at, with your schoolwork, I knew there needed to be an episode in the book with, where sport is playing baseball. <laughs> I'll show you. Here it is. And again, you can imagine if you've either played baseball or been to a baseball game, here's sport. Now they, had, they were playing somewhere where the other team did not know that sport was all on the team. So I imagine that someone on the other team said, get that mutt off the field, get that mutt off the field. And you can imagine that player might've been thinking, oh, that dog's gonna be in the way. We cannot have a dog out there. Well, the people that were up in the stands, families watching the baseball game, they started calling out, sport, sport, sport. We want sport. Would you have done that if you were at the baseball game? Can we do it right now? Yes, you can. Is everybody ready? Take a little pause. Sport. Sport, sport, we want sport. Should we? Well, now we'll do it again. Two, two, two more times, I'll bet. You can put your hand up if you want. Sport, <laughs> sport, sport, we want sport. Sport, 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 we want sport. And sport, every, thank you, everyone. Sport, <laughs> join the team that night. He caught the ball. He tagged players in the outfield. Of course, he needed someone else to bat for him, right? So that shows he was a well-loved dog. He was part of the team. I've got other things in the book here. Let's see. I will share something dramatic that happened with Spork. Oh, he was in Chicago, and perhaps you know Chicago. Is it a small town or a big city? Big city. Yes, a big city. So what would happen? The Hyacinth would go to Chicago to get coal or a lot of um, building wood and building supplies for the lighthouses, and Sport would get off the ship. Makes sense. He loved to sniff around, as dogs do. He did not hear when the captain blew the whistle to get back on the boat. Oh no, the hyacinth had to leave to keep their deliveries going. They felt bad about it, but they needed to go out on the on Lake Michigan again. So what happened? There was a man just walking around Chicago down at the docks and he saw sport. He thought sport looked like a good wear watchdog. He didn't know that sport already had a job. 
the man put a rope around Sport's neck and led him to a warehouse. Sport didn't know what was happening or how he would get back to his ship. Now the next day, an ice wagon was out delivering ice to restaurants and grocery stores in Chicago. The driver of the ice wagon recognized Sport. Sport, what are you doing here? He turned to the warehouse worker. This dog belongs on the Hyacinth. He needs to be returned to his home, to his ship. The iceman took Sport and said, I'm getting you home, Sport. They went down to the Chicago docks. Sport didn't see his ship or the crew members anywhere. The Hyacinth was gone. But he did see a ship he had seen before. The Indiana was one of the biggest ships on Lake Michigan. And passion, it was a passenger ship, which means that families like you would have been on that ship taking trips. Is that Sport? The captain of the SS Indiana called down. If that's Sport, he can hitch a ride back to Milwaukee with us. How lucky it was that so many people on the lake knew sport. And this was one of my favorite illustrations in the book. This could have been you 100 years ago. You could have been on a vacation with your family on the SS Indiana, and you might have heard that there was a dog on the ship that they were taking back to Milwaukee. Soon the children started coming down from the ship's dining room to meet this dog. They all wanted to hear the stories of the dog who fell in the Milwaukee River during a storm, who joined a crew and lived on a ship, who helped bring supplies to the lighthouses, who played baseball, who looked out for his crewmates on the Hyacinth, and who had made friends all over the lake. And look at here, is sports scared anymore? No. So, and this illustration reminds me that 100 years ago and, he, and today, Children love dogs, and you, if, you, if, if you have an opportunity, you'll hug a dog if, if you can. And the mm -hmm. children told their families and friends about sport, and the story of sport continued to spread. Now here's sport back on his ship. Meeting the children of the passenger ship had been exciting, but sport was happy to be back with his crew on the Hyacinth. He had good friends to play with tonight and important work to do tomorrow. Get close here for you. Let's see, where, where we go? Where are we? Here we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. That night, Sport fell asleep to the sway of the ship and the sound of the water. He was a ship dog, and this ship was his home. And there's Sport with one of the crew. Oh, do I have him up there enough? There he is with one of the crewmen. There you go, perfect. There, okay, a little bit of flat, um, glare. So that's a telling a part of Sport's story. And as a reminder, he was a real dog. I'll show you his photograph again. There he is. Look, he was not a puppy. He was more full grown. And here's a photograph of the ship when it was out of water. I that was it's, this photograph is not identified, but I believe this was it in Dry Dock in Manitowoc. Manitowoc has a wonderful wonderful maritime museum. Maybe your family can take you there. Or friends can take you and see the Maritime Museum in Manitowoc. Oh. 
Um, could I share a little bit about the, do we have questions now? We'll do, should we take a break for questions and then I can do the, um, the lifeguard dogs and the dog communication? What do you think? Yeah, Miss Catherine. I think, well, first of all, we'll ask for questions, but can you also show us um, the finished product of this again? Yes, I some will. Yes, because you're getting close. Oh, and I just, I wish I was focusing on the book, but I could, corner of my eye, I could see, oh, you're working. Very good. That's good. So what you'll what you'll do is, um, of course, you have it on a sheet, and you'll cut out both shapes. Okay. The top is the lighthouse. The bottom is sport. So if you carefully cut it out, then you will also see on each piece there's just a little slit. There's a black line, a little. You can see it's a, a slit. Cut up, no, and you'll. No, no. Don't cut too, cut, cut it's about less than an inch for those of you that have done your measurements already. And just, just a little snip on both the top and the bottom. And then you will slot, slot sports at the, sport comes off the front and slot both, put, slot both in. It's fun to do slots. You can make some, you can make some dioramas of your own. When you, when you, once you get the concept of a diorama and their sport, it's, it's a diorama. It's like a 3D um, reminder. And then you can set it on a table, put it in your bedroom. And Renee Grafe, the illustrator, made these especially for you. Wasn't that nice of her? And so that's how you do that. You have scissors and how, I bet all, is all the coloring going well, Miss Catherine? It is going very well. You should see, these are some amazing pictures of sports. Yeah, I'll have to see, you have to send me some. I should say my uh, six-year-old grandson made this one and my four-year-old granddaughter made this one. So it's special to me that they were able to do it. And I know some of you are about, you know, that age, age or older. So uh, it's very fun to see. I can see, oh, I see lots of nice colors. Are there, oh, are you, are there any um, questions right now? Ooh. The blue sky too. Yes, I can see you did the blue sky, which is fine. Um, Very that's nice. fine. You, you add, that's um, and we've got some trees and clouds. And if you want to keep some, if you want to keep, you might be able to keep some of your blue. Though I just saw a blue sky at the front. It's possible you might. I'm not sure if Miss Catherine's right there. She might be able to keep some of that blue sky. Yeah, keep some of that. I know some <laughs> blue sky there. <laughs> it still might work as a diorama. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, you are. Busy bees. Does anyone have a, anyone want to know something about sport that we didn't talk about? What's that? What's your question? If you don't know, do you know your question? Yeah. What's your question? Like, um, like, um, Oh, so you had the part in your book about sport playing baseball. Was that real too? What, really what, okay, I, I, I'll be more clear on that. Because of the photograph, that was evidence. And I think some of, in school, you might have, have you heard that word evidence? Mm -hmm. Evidence, I think it's some, in elementary schools. That was proof or evidence that sport was part of the team. And uh, just that the fact that they put him here, I then did a little bit of creativity, which you sometimes have to do with um, this type of historical fiction, it's based on a true story though, is that I, no one wrote down that this episode happened, that someone called out and said, oh, get the dog off the field. But I thought it possibly could have happened because as I said, folks don't think a dog should be out on a ball field. Even today, if it happened, once in a while, you'll hear it in the news that a dog will get out there. And they have to scoot that dog off the field or a bird or something funny happens on a on a ball field and they need to get that obstacle out. But thank you for asking that. So I did a little creativity with that, but it's all based on, I knew sport had to be there at those ball games. And he's part, he was part retriever. So we have another question. Okay. Um, and they had missed the very beginning of the story. So can you just remind us how sport got on a boat in the first place? Like, okay, a couple of people that came in, no. Okay, well, we do know this and this is true. Sport was rescued from the Milwaukee River. And I'll show you the picture. Some of the newcomers, I definitely will show that. I can talk forever. We know he was a puppy. 
We know it was 1914, long time ago. It was the year 1914. And we know he was rescued from the river. And we know Albert and Clifford did it, did that. But that's all we knew. And so then I just made it, I thought, well, what would it have looked like? They, mm-hmm. Albert and Clifford wouldn't have jumped into the river. They would have known they needed to get a little boat. So then I, I wrote it that way. That they, they knew they had to get that, that little puppy they saw in the water during a storm and rescue it. So they rescued Sport from the Milwaukee River. And then I imagined that they took him back on the ship, which they would. They just wouldn't leave him on the dock. They would bring him back, and first thing was they were toweling him dry, which we would do, wouldn't it? Even today, if we saw a puppy that needed help, we would a wet puppy, we towel it dry. Sure. Thanks for that. Those questions. Yeah, some more. And he was well grown up. Oh, so how old? How old did he live? How long did he live? We have another he question. In, yes. Yeah, so how long did he live? Uh, boys and girls do ask that. He lived until 1926, and that's when he passed away of old age. Because sometimes I get the questions that I'll kind of answer it now. Some think, someone has, has asked me, oh, did he, um, was everything fine with his life? And I say, yes, he lived to an old age, or 12. So we know he lived at least 12 years, and that's a long age for a dog. And it's also a reminder how, if we have pets in our family, we, we keep, take good care of them, hoping that they will live a long life and also knowing that they might pass away. So that's a sadness in the story, but I was always happy that the crew took, care, took, care, took him in and they took really good care of him. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that question. He had a any good other, Any other questions before we talk about working dogs? I think we're ready for working dogs. Working dogs. Thanks for the question. Oh, I can't wait to see the dioramas. <laughs> okay. Sport was a Newfie. And well, I did lots of research on Newfies. I do not have a Newfie. But I'll tell you, they weigh more than we do. They weigh 150 pounds. They're big dogs. Has anyone ever seen a Newfie or been around a Newfie? Uh, okay. Miss Catherine has. Miss Catherine, where have you seen a Newfie? A friend of mine owned a Newfie. Okay. Yeah, they are big dogs. And they are considered water dogs, rescue dogs. They always, in the old days, they'd be on ships because if there was something that happened and uh, someone needed help on the water, those Newfies would jump in the water. Also, Newfies would bring in fishing nets. So they used to uh, fish with nets and the dogs would jump in and pull in the nets and then in would come the fish catch. But another thing about Newfies, of course, I, we mentioned the, I mentioned the book, they have web feet. They can swim very strongly with those web paws. They have a, also um, the double coat, keeps them warm in cold water, like Michigan is cold. They also have a very strong tail that they use like a rudder. So they can change their direction. All dogs prop use their tail as they swim to turn direction and help with the, uh, getting moving ahead. Newfies are also, they like to, they are, take well to being trained. They don't bark a lot, they're loyal. And as I said, if they see something that's a danger, they will want to help. They also used to use them as a nanny dog. Have you, if you've heard the word nanny? Nanny is a, a person, an adult, that usually takes care of children like a babysitter. It's a name, it's a word like babysitter. Well, in the old days, Newfies were called nanny dogs. The children might be outside and maybe the parents were in the house and they would have that dog outside with the children so the children were safe. That's a helper dog, isn't it? Well, here's one book I'd like to share with you. And Miss Catherine might have this series in your library. It's the Dog Hero series. This one has to be, is called Life guard dogs. I'll share a few pages because it starts off by saying Newfoundlands, there's a Newfie right here, black and white one, and Labrador Retrievers, which you might more likely have seen, or Golden Retrievers are wonderful lifeguard dogs. They love to be in the water, they love to rescue, they love to retreat. These dogs are in Italy, the country of Italy, and they are learning how to help people if they get in trouble in the water. 
And they start off having the dogs very happy in, in the water, just being having fun with their trainer. They have a trainer who has to teach them how to be a lifeguard dog. This is a very fun photo. Look carefully. There's an inflatable boat half filled with Newfie puppies. And on the other side, there's some full grown Newfies. But what's amazing, down in the water with a rope in his mouth is another Newfie pulling in this boatload of Newfies. What's happening here? They are training this boatload of Newfies to stay in the boat. They might want to jump in and go swimming, but they are being trained to not jump out of a boat until they've been told to. So there they are. Is that a funny picture? It also shows how strong Newfies are. That's an inflatable boat. It would float pretty well, and it, it would not, we, you could probably pull it in, but it'd be hard for you, you to, or even a, adult people. So that's part of their training. I love that picture. And then once they've gotten really trained on how to go into the water and save someone, if someone is in distress, they also train them to jump out of a helicopter. So there's a 150 pound Newfie jumping out of a helicopter that's hovering fairly close to the water. And right behind the Newfie is its handler, its trainer. And they probably felt they needed to get out. They're doing training here. They needed to get out fast. The helicopter got them out faster than a small boat would. And here they're pr practicing coming up, being lifted up out of the water. So the, the Newfie needs to be uh, comfortable being lifted out of the water. So I hope you enjoyed that and here's some of the handlers on the beach. A couple of weeks ago, I talked to someone who had Newfies. And let's see if anyone, think of anyone, in, any dog in your life. This person had a Newfie and they said they couldn't even go take that Newfie to the dock, to the beach or to the lake because the Newfie would see people out swimming and just want to jump in and save them. They, maybe someone was out there and they weren't in trouble, but that Newfie just was so interested in being a helper that it wanted to bring in people that weren't even in trouble. So it's also a reminder for us all to be careful around water this summer. And did I point out those Newfies that were are trained, they were wearing a life preserver with a handle on to keep them safe. So I always remind ourselves to be safe around the water. So I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, and then a little bit on dog communication. Let's think. Do you think an animal, a dog or cat's trying to communicate with you? If you're around some animals, start thinking about it because there are scientists, animal scientists, behavioral scientists, that's their job. They look at animals and they observe them and try to figure out how an animal is communicating with you. Now, here's one thing that I, I read and it only makes sense because we can think of our own lives. Say someone kind of yells at you real sharp and mean. That mm, gets you a little scared, doesn't it? Dogs are the same way. We want to train our dogs, but if we say it in a firm, I mean business without yelling or screaming, the dog will be a better listener, just like we are. We, it's hard to have yell, loud yelling in our ears. Same for dogs, they are very sensitive. So if you're helping to train a dog, you don't need to yell real loud, you just need to be firm. Now, tail wagging. Have you ever watched a dog wag its tail? The next time you see one, watch that tail. It might go swish, 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 swish. Happy way. But watch and see. Maybe it's kind of like really, really fast. A little, maybe it's a little nervous, a little scared. Maybe the tail's tucked down between its legs. Hmm. What would a tucked tail indicate? Maybe a little scared. You know? Yep. Benny, what do you think? Yeah. Now, I'm with one, two more things. Have you ever seen a dog yawn? Mm -hmm. okay. What would that mean when you saw a dog yawn? What, did, what would you think? Tired. Tired. Tired, yeah. Just like we, when we yawn. Have you ever seen a dog take its back leg and scratch its ear? 
reach up and scratch its ear? What would you think then? <laughs> what would you think then? Probably itchy. itchy. Yeah, got an itch, got an itchy ear. I used to think when I had a dog when I was a little kid, I thought, oh, he might have an ear infection. <laughs> well, that might be true. They might have, they might be tired with the yawn. They might have an itch with that scratch. But animal scientists have also figured out that is a signal that the dog is communicating with you and saying, you know, I think I'm just kind of go over here and cool off. Just kind of stay away from the action. It's a calming. They're trying to just kind of get out of the action, a little time out. They're giving themselves a time out. You'd never know that, would you? So watch for those type of signals that dogs and any animal are giving out because there's so much to observe about an animal behavior. Are there any questions about anyone have in your lives? Dogs or talking or communicating with dogs? Communicating a little weird. Oh, yeah. Oh, when did that happen? Do you know like what period of time were nanny dogs like really popular? Um, um, well, this goes back a couple of years. I've got, I've got several really nice, wonderful books on uh, Newfies. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I'm basing it on would be like the late 1900s and the early 20th century, like 1900, when uh, the Victorian time. And okay. the dogs were in England. And also, if you think about it, Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. no, I'm, I misspoke. Peter Pan. Yeah, Peter Pan. I, what, what was the dog in Peter Pan? Was it Nana? Nana. Nana, 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 Nana. Nana. Mm -hmm. and that's the connection, Nana, and I need to, I need to read Peter Pan again, so about that time, it, but it could go back, I think, I'm thinking dogs, dog, all, whether it's a Newfie or other dogs, I think some dogs were trained just to watch, keep an eye on children, when the parents might be working in the fields or somewhere, and dogs were watching children. Any other questions? Any other questions? Oh, Ooh, what? I thought yeah. of one more thing. Yes, yeah, so I thought of one thing. Now, here we are at the end of June. And that would be if you see something in your neighborhood that is of interest in your area, and it could be involved an animal in your life, if you wrote that down, share it with people in your lives, and then perhaps it's kept at your house. 100 years from now, someone could read your story about your real animal, just like I read about sport. And then they would say, wow, in 2021, this person had a dog or a cat or a turtle or lived in a neighborhood and had a woods or had a stream. You could write about it and then they would know about the time right now that you're living in. That, that's a fun thing to think about. And maybe you could take a Photo, take a photo of your animal, take a picture of your animal and put it with a story. That and we, we say that's part of history. You could make history. You're, you would be writing down what's happening right now and it would become a, hi a history fun thing for the future. Very cool. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Are you guys gonna write stories about animals that yeah. you see? Yes. And if you do oh. share them, and then I'll share them with Miss Cameron, it'll be great. I know, it's gonna be oh, so how, how, well, I need, I'm still, I'm, you know, at the corner of my eye, I don't want, I'm looking down here. Uh, how Taking lots of diorama's coming. I just, like I said, this is, I can't, this is making <laughs> my day. This is making my day. Oh, look at them. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh, just gorgeous. Wonderful jobs. Oh, I love it. I love it. You got the slits all cut. Oh, yeah, they're champs. They're great. I will send you pictures. Great. And then you have the little uh, die cuts for them also. This group can have a die cut or, yep. So, yeah, I don't, I meant to bring one with me. I forgot to bring one here on my travels. But that, the little directions are in there. And you'll make a little um, a sport that can stand up and you could, um, you can yeah. make other figures, you know, you could, again, you could do your animal, you could do, I, you know, it'd be fun to do like a diorama, like a family, your family, oh, that'd your be house. Fun. you could make a diorama of your house and make it stand up in your yard, since mm -hmm. now we're home, we're home outside, we're outside, well, what else do you think, Miss Catherine? Uh, What's that, do you have a question? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll stay on if anyone has questions.
question and then we will say goodbye for today. But do you want to ask? Here, go. Ask your question. What's your question? What is a diorama? Oh, how would you? So we know what a diorama looks like, but can you explain it to us? Oh, yes. Thanks for. I, I should have gone to the. Well, see, I should have gone to the dictionary to see. Uh, <laughs> And I said three-dimensional. Dying kind of means two, doesn't it? What does die mean in the, or the prefix? Uh, rama, I think rama is a kind of a, a, a scan, a, a way of seeing, we say a panorama. If we kind of look yeah, at yeah. our heads and we go, oh, that's a panorama. That's a beautiful scope here. So rama must be like looking at a whole view. And that's where, what you've done here. You have the trees and the sky, the lighthouse and sport. And then die, I'm not sure. <laughs> We have, uh, uh, yeah. um, could you look that up when you get home? You could write a uh, diorama down or look it up online, look it up in a dictionary. Thanks for that. I, I need to, you're reminding me, I need to look that up. Oh, okay. Did you have fun making the diorama? Your diorama? Yeah. Thank you. All right, boys and girls, boys and girls, I need everybody to say thank you to Miss Cameron for sharing this amazing story. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Have a wonderful summer, everybody. I hope to come to Air Library you. sometime in the future and meet you and Miss Catherine. I can see you have a super duper library. Enjoy your yeah. life this summer. Do with people. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Miss Catherine and everybody. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.